Embedded in the local food culture, rotis have been puffing on the Mauritian towers for decades. This is a footage filmed by my sister, demonstrating a typical roti seller in Mauritius. Filling served with the roti may vary slightly depending on where the roti is being purchased. But there are at least two that are the most common ones. The white bean curry and the hogai sauce. And in this case, steamed taro greens are also served. Then there are some chutneys, vegetable pickles, along with preserved chilies that are optional. As humble as roti and curry may sound, the combination of these toppings all rolled up in a soft, freshly made flatbread create the most satisfying treat for the palate. No wonder that through the ages, roti and curry remains one of the most popular food in Mauritius. Hi guys, so welcome to the Vegan Lovely channel. This is Tunuja and today is a little bit uh, different because this is part one of a series of three videos. So a few weeks ago we had uh, several requests for different recipes and one of them came from Stolzi who wanted the recipes for the fillings that are served with the typical Mauritian roti. So the fillings may vary from cellar to cellar depending on um, where you're buying the roti but we have picked um, three fillings which is the white bean curry, the rugai sauce and a coriander chutney which are the most um, popular ones. So in parts um, two and three I will be um, sharing the recipes for the curry, the rugai and the chutney but in this first part let's start by making the roti itself. The commercial roti or farata usually calls for oil in the dough and while cooking but my version here is completely oil free using only flour and water. In a large mixing bowl add the flour, make a well in the center and carefully pour in the hot water. To help this oil free roti retain its velvety soft texture the water has to be boiling hot just out of the kettle. With the help of a spoon, stir the mixture to combine the flour and water. Keep mixing as much as possible to start forming a dough. Once the mixture is a little cooler and comfortable to handle by hand, start to knead it into a supple dough. At this stage, you can either add a little more flour if the dough is sticky or a little water if it is too dry. What we are looking to achieve is a soft, supple and non-sticky dough. Once a soft and non-sticky dough is obtained, smooth it into a bowl and place it back into the mixing bowl. Cover with a lid or tea towel and let it rest for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, knead the dough for a couple of minutes on a floured surface. Then roll it out into a log and cut it into six equal pieces. Roll each piece in the palm of your hands to form a nice smooth ball, then flatten it. Lightly press all around the edge, then dip in a bowl of flour to completely coat the dough with the flour. Set the floured dough aside and do the same for the rest of the dough pieces. On a floured board, place one piece of dough and begin to roll out. Try to keep a more or less circle shape and roll out to about 2 mm thick. As I mentioned, this is an oil free roti, but if you do want to use a little oil, then at this stage you can brush the surface of the flattened dough with a thin coat of oil before folding it. Otherwise, fold one third of the circle of dough toward the center and fold the opposite edge over to form a long rectangle. Then again, fold the two shorter ends towards the center 
to form a square. Repeat for the rest of the dough. Keep all the dough pieces and folded ones covered while you're working on the rest so that they don't dry out. Now take the folded dough parcel and place it on a floured board. Begin to roll out to about 2 to 3 mm thick. The shape will more or less remain square, which is one other characteristic of the ferrata, apart from the multi-layer texture. Place the rolled out ferrata onto a floured plate and continue with the rest, flowering them between each layer so that they do not stick to one another. If you are making a bigger batch of roti, I do not recommend that you stack more than 10 as with time the gluten will relax further and the rotis at the bottom will start to stick to one another. Before starting to cook the farathas, turn the whole stack over so that you may start with the first roti that was rolled out. Make sure the tawa or crepe pan is hot and the heat kept on medium high. You may need to adjust the heat later if the pan gets too hot. Allow the roti to cook for about 30 seconds on one side and then flip over and cook for another 20 seconds or until it starts to bubble. Then flip it over again and it will start to puff up. Gently press on the side of the puff to push and distribute the air inside the roti for a more even puffing. Then remove the roti from the pan and place on a plate. Keep the roti covered with a clean tea towel to keep it soft. Cook the rest of the rotis and stack them on top of one another. Occasionally flip the stack over. This will keep the freshly cooked ones soft with the steam. And look at those layers of fluffiness. These rotis are best enjoyed fresh and on the same day. Now all we need is some curry to go with it. So stay tuned for parts 2 and 3 where I will be sharing the fillings which are the curry, the rogai sauce and the chutney recipes. If you've enjoyed this recipe please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and enable your email notifications so that you don't miss the other videos. I'll see you soon!